प्लांट किंगडम पार्ट वन लिविंग थिंग्स कैन ब्रॉडली बी डिवाइडेड इनटू टू मेन ग्रुप्स प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स वी ह्यूमन बीइंग्स आर पार्ट ऑफ द एनिमल किंगडम एज आर एंसेस्टर्स वर एप्स trees are the largest living things on earth and they live longer than any animal they are found in almost all parts of the world they are of different shapes and sizes our world is full of different types of plants let us learn about them roots Plants have roots which spread through the soil and hold them firmly in the ground. Roots mostly grow under the ground. Plants do not have to search for food. They can spend their entire life rooted in one place. They absorb minerals and water from the soil which are then carried to the leafy shoots. Roots prevent the plant from being blown away by the wind. Look, the banyan tree is growing on a rocky ground. Its roots have spread out over the surface as they cannot grow through rocks. Some cacti grow such deep roots that they reach underground water. Root hairs are tiny hairy things which grow from the main root. These hairs make the surface area of the root bigger so that the plant can take in much more water. There are two types of roots, tap root and fibrous root. Plants like rose, shoe flower, Mango and neem have tap roots. The main root is long and thick. Smaller roots grow from the main root. Tap roots go deep into the soil. Plants like grass, sugarcane, wheat and rice have fibrous roots. There is no main root. There is a network of long and thin roots. which spread out throughout the top layer of the soil their lateral roots are smaller than those of the tap roots fibrous roots do not go deep into the ground many plants use their roots to store food as a result the roots grow thick such roots like carrot radish parsnip turnip etc are called storage roots a lot of our sugar comes from the swollen roots of the beetroot plant not all the roots grow underground some roots grow above the ground too these are called aerial roots the banyan tree has root which grow down from its branches stem the roots leaves and flowers of a plant are all joined together by a stem plant stems usually grow thicker as the plant grows taller food and water travel up and down the stem to reach all parts of the plant The stem usually pushes upwards towards the light. It holds the leaves out such that they can catch the sunlight. The way the leaves and flowers are exposed to the sun and insects is very important. Most plants have round stems, but some stems are square or rigid. The size of a plant stem depends on how many leaves and branches the plant has to support a tall plant needs more support so it has a thicker stem 
Plants are classified on the basis of their stems. Trees are the biggest plants on earth. A tree stem is called a trunk. It has to be strong enough to hold up long branches full of leaves and sometimes fruit. Shrubs like lilac, hibiscus and golden shower have narrow but woody stems. These live for a few years. Herbs like grass, wheat, mint and coriander have small and soft stems. Some climbers like the money plant and grapevine have narrow and weak stems. They need support of trees or poles to climb. Creepers like pumpkin and watermelon plants have narrow and weak stems. These creep on the ground. They bear big and heavy fruits, so they cannot climb on a support. Typical stems are located above the ground, but there are modified stems that are grown below the ground. You are well aware of these stems since you eat them in your daily diet. Potatoes, garlic, ginger. Plant Kingdom Part 2 Coming to the Leaves Everything on planet Earth is alive because of our green friends, leaves. They come in a variety of shapes, sizes and color. Without them, animals and human beings would have nothing to eat. They also provide the air with life-giving oxygen which we breathe. They have one common function that is they prepare food for the plant. That is why they are known as the food factory of the plant. Leaves prepare food with the help of air, sunlight, mineral salts and rain. They contain a special substance called chlorophyll. This chlorophyll absorbs the sun's energy. When sunlight shines on a leaf, the carbon dioxide and water join together to make sugar and oxygen. They produce food in the form of sugar. Plants use this food to grow. The extra food is stored in the form of starch in the stem, root and leaves. Now look at this leaf carefully. The flat surface of the leaf is called the leaf blade. The veins carry water, minerals and prepared food to and from the leaves. On the lower side of the leaf blade, there are many tiny holes called stomata. Plants breathe through them. The flower the flower is the most attractive and colourful part of the plant. Flowers which do not have bright colours often have a pleasant smell. Most flowers grow into fruits and the fruits have seeds inside them. Hence, a flower is actually the seed box of the plant. Let us see how the flower turns into a fruit. Butterflies, bees and other insects are attracted to the flowers by their bright colours and their pleasant scent. Flowers have nectar in them. This nectar is food for the bees and butterflies. Thus, they keep visiting the flowers again and again. These insects help to carry the pollen, 
that is the yellow powdery substance to other flowers. This helps the flowers to make seeds. This is called pollination. Coming to the fruits. Any structure that holds the seed or seeds is called a fruit. Fruits store seeds in them. The seeds grow into new plants. There are some fruits like the mango that have only one seed. There are some fruits like apple and watermelon that have many seeds. Blackberries and custard apples are compound fruits as each seed is contained in its own parcel of sweet flesh. Lots of parcels like this combine to form the fruit. Lastly, seeds. A seed is that part of a plant from which new plants grow. The outer covering of a seed is called seed coat. Every seed has a tiny plant inside it, which is called an embryo. It also stores food to help the plant grow. This food is used to keep the embryo, that is a partly developed plant or seedling, alive and to give it energy to germinate. When the seed gets the right conditions, that is proper temperature, water and air, it starts to develop into a tiny seedling. This first stage of growth is called germination. This prevents the seed from rotting. When the seed leaves the parent plant, it is usually dry. It also keeps it light in weight. From seed to fruit and fruit to seed, the cycle goes on. Hence, plants too are a part of our mother nature and provide us with many things with their unique characteristics. Let us also save them.